Hello, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us, Vanessa. Good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we'll just wait a couple minutes for a couple more people to trickle in. There's supposed to be one other panelist, um, Kira, but let me check to see if she'll be joining us. Uh, but yeah, we'll wait a couple minutes and then we'll start. Um, we'll just like do some questions and then um, we'll let the audience ask their questions as well too. And yeah, just making like a, like kind of like a co very conversational and let people just kind of get to know more about you and your experience. Gotcha. Cool, sounds good. Um, okay, so let me check in to see if Kara's her way. Um... All right, cool. Sounds good. Well, we'll just get started. And if um, our other panelists joins us along the way, you know, we'll just like pick up from there. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. My name is Belisha. Um, I'm community manager at Ladder. Um, thanks so much for joining us for this event um, to learn more about the Bain associate consultant position. Um, we're joined by Vanessa here, um, who is an associate consultant at Bain, um, who will be sharing more about her role and just sharing more about the recruiting application process um, for the associate consultant uh, position as well too. So if you have any questions along the way throughout the panel, just go ahead and drop them in the chat um, and then we'll we'll get to them during the moderated Q&A section. Um, but otherwise, I'll let Vanessa lead off with an intro and then we'll dive right into a couple of questions we've prepared. Let me just mute myself. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to meet you all. I'm a first year associate consultant based in the LA office. And prior to working at Bain, I went to undergrad at NYU at the business school where I explored a lot of the different consulting uh, paths from internal consulting to big four consulting. Um, and that's how I ended up at Bain today. I've really, really loved it so far, even though I've only started for a couple of months. So happy to answer any other questions or um, be as much of a help as I can be. Yeah, for sure. It sounds awesome. And congrats on starting on a new job as well too. Um, cool. And so if you're just joining us, um, we mentioned earlier, if you have any questions along the way, the chat is open. So just feel free to drop questions in there for Vanessa, and then we'll moderate them later on and make sure your question gets answered. Um, so to kind of kick us off, um, what initially got you interested in the associate consultant role at Bain? And like, you know, how did you hear about it? Gotcha. So I first heard about the position um, probably throughout school, even though Big Four was um, recruiting was a big emphasis at my school. Um, people really talked about MBV as kind of an enigma. Um, people wanted to work there, but didn't really know how to best proceed to get there. Um, and then in terms of what really drew me to Bain and specifically being an AC there, I'm sure that every single consulting um, person that you've ever talked to always speaks about the culture and how they really, really love the people. And I think that obviously the same, while the same can be true of my experience so far, just the amount of support that I got, even as a candidate, even from a traditionally non-target school where a bunch of people, including at the partner level, were so willing to help me case, run through my behaviorals, just talk about day-to-day -day life was something so, so unique. Um, and I've never felt really more supported throughout an entire application process as I did with Bain. And in addition, like people always tell me that um, the AC community is such a great place to start a new job, to start a new city. And although I was super scared about moving to LA because my entire family and all my friends, and I also went to college in New York, um, being surrounded by people who I honestly can really get along with outside of work, where we just hang out every single week, even though we don't have to, um, has been a really nice um, environment that I've enjoyed so far. Cool, sounds awesome. And then so given like your past few months in this role, like how would you describe your day to day? Um, I would say there's really no day-to-day -day cadence, but it can probably be best described in a week-to-week -week cadence. Um, so generally, on any given day throughout the week, 
we would be preparing client materials, um, kind of running through data and synthesize really actionable insights that are interesting or that really drive the answer for the specific client. Um, and then presenting that data or presenting our work to the client, kind of gauging their assessment, aligning on what the best view is going forward, and then seeing um, based on their guidance and what information, what new information that we might have gotten or the new insights that they may have as the department leaders or as functional leaders, seeing how to best um, drive the case forward. Cool, awesome. And then given your past couple months uh, in the role, what would you describe the company culture as? Um, I would describe it as a really big apprenticeship model, um, which I think is something that they even describe themselves as like on their website or whatnot. Um, but in the first six months as starting in AC, which is where I am now, people constantly reiterate that there's really no expectation for you to be doing like amazing, amazing work. They're not expecting you to come in with an arsenal of Excel skills or an arsenal of how to best approach this client um, situation. So they describe it as the training model is like in the first couple months, you have your like in bubble wrap, you have training wheels on and people are there to protect you if you fall. And that's really what I've experienced so far where a consultant on my team will be explaining super, super minute details of how to not use the mouse on Excel or how to like color things a certain way. And um, there's the expectation that really no matter what level you are at, someone has always got your back. So even people with very high tenures can always rely on other people to, um, if they don't know something or if they need help. Um, and I think that's very much true of the culture where you will, will always feel supported and you never really feel alone because you're not the only one going through the same situation. And there's so many other people who know what it's like to start and not have any idea of what you're doing. Got it. Got it. That's really awesome. And based on the past couple months, you've been there as well too. Can you like kind of describe like, you know, what, uh, what a typical project would look like and what, you know, getting on board with that project looks like? Yeah, so the typical project at Bain varies tremendously, but I would say the biggest differentiator between um, different categories of projects is one being a private equity group, so super private equity focused, um, that typically has shorter due diligences. And then um, there's another section called GP. I'm not quite sure what GP stands for. It might be general practice where it's everything non-private um, equity related. and Beyond that, um, GP is typically longer stints. You have a, a more structured team and you're not doing really quick turnarounds. You're doing like lengthy, maybe months long explorations of what the client is looking to discover. Um, so that's kind of the two biggest differentiators um, and the two like very general categories of what those uh, cases might be like. Got it. That sounds really cool. And then so kind of moving into, you know, what the recruiting and the applying process kind of looks like. Um, so what does the application time look like for either the intern or the associate consultant position for Bain? And, you know, when, when, when can people expect to hear back and whatnot as well? Gotcha. So the associate consultant position is actually due tomorrow. So if there's any um, rising seniors or people who are out of college um, in their postgrad life, that's definitely a great position for you to apply for. And then for the associate consultant internship position, that deadline is more at the end of September. Um, and that's kind of where you um, can send in your application. In terms of the timeline of interviews, there's a pretty quick turnaround of, I think, three weeks of when your first round interview might be, of when your final round interview might be, and when you would hear back. So once you have your first round interview, which I'm not too sure how soon after you submit your application it might be, um, but once you have your first round interview, usually this final round is pretty shortly after, whether it's a week after, two weeks after, I've heard both scenarios um, be that case. Got it, cool, awesome. And then in terms of the interviews, what does that end-to-end -end process look like um, from the first round to the last round? Um, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so like what, what does each interview entail? Like when can you expect a behavioral? When can you expect a case? What types of cases? Gotcha, yeah. So from my perspective alone, I can only really speak on my experience interviewing um, at Bain last year. I would say that the first round has less, less of an emphasis on behaviorals in that there's no direct question where 
they're going to like ask about teamwork or ask about problem solving. A lot of the behavioral component, at least from my experience, is very much embedded in the case where they want to see how you would react um, to them posing brainstorming questions or they want to see how you would react if there were, you were in a stressful or tricky situation. Um, so I think the way that you carry yourself throughout the case is a, an important component of the behavioral where you can show your personality if you want to and bring in anecdotal experiences that you have. Um, so my first two cases in the first round behavioral were both market sizing cases, um, generally pretty straightforward. Um, one had assumptions that they had given me and the second um, were, was a scenario in which I had to come up with my own assumptions. And then in the final round, the second round case, the first one was a pretty standard um, like case and it wasn't a market sizing, but just um, a general growth case. And then beyond that, the final round was a more kind of brainstorming behavioral component with a partner where we were just talking about um, specific industries that I had on my resume and specific avenues in which we saw the future of the industries that we had talked about. Um, generally, I heard that is discouraged now. They want the partners to have a very um, set guidelines of how they run their interviews, of how to run their uh, cases to have less unconscious bias. But that was just personally my experience. And I would probably, um, again, reiterate the component about how, while there may not be strict behavioral components where they allocate 10 minutes of a time to ask you questions, they really want to see how conversational you might be throughout the interview. Got it. That sounds really awesome. And then for you personally, what did you do to prepare for it, both the recruiting and the interview process? Gotcha. So for the recruiting process, um, I took the time to just get to know different people at Bain, um, specifically from various offices or at different tenures. Um, a lot of the people that I talked to at Bain were partners, which I thought would be super intimidating in the beginning, um, but actually they're so, so friendly. And I think very few undergraduates tend to reach out to them. So if you do have the time to reach out to people who maybe go to your school or have went to different programs that you know of, I would really recommend it. And then in terms of the interviewing process, um, I did like probably way too many cases than I would recommend for an interview um, over the summer. So around this time, I would do a case a week. And then during the um, interviewing process where I was having interviews regularly, I probably do like three to four cases a week. But honestly, it doesn't even matter how many cases that you have done. Um, I think the most important thing is that you're actually absorbing each case. So I did this way too late, but having feedback and then writing down the feedback that you get after each practice case and then reviewing it before you start your next case. So you're not just like doing cases after case without really absorbing what you have learned, but instead just being super tactical and um, really allocating your time as effectively as you can. Got it. Cool. That sounds really awesome. And who are the best people to kind of network? with to kind of prepare for the recruiting process? Like, should we like be networking with analysts, partners, managers, alumni? Like, who would you recommend? Yeah, I would say that alumni at your school is probably the best bet if you do have alumni at your school. Um, if not, just any associate consultant that you really resonate with, um, whether it could be their, like what they've explored or kind of where they might have interned in the past or what types of organizations they were involved in at undergrad. Um, I also networked with partners and I think um, the partner time can, like you're only getting 15 to 20 minutes of their time, but if you really, really hit it off with them, I think it has, is such a great opportunity. And from there, all the partners at Bain have like a different profile online. So I would just look for people who like cared about work-life balance or who like were exploring an industry that I really cared about. So generally, I would say that there's really no specific type of tenure that is the most effective person to talk to for networking, just whoever you feel like you can resonate with. Got it. Cool. That's a really good piece of advice. And then, yeah, in terms of like, you know, candidates the recruiting team is looking for, what types of skills are they looking for in candidates? Um, and for people who maybe not necessarily have any experience, how can they caveat some leadership leadership experience to reflect the skills recruiters are looking for? Yeah, um, I would say that they 
care about like kind of an interest in consulting and that doesn't necessarily at all have to be in, like and shown through the fact that you have interned in consulting or that you have done something like in the industry it can be anything related to oh i love problem solving or i love tackling a number of different ideas so if you can express that throughout your resume or throughout your cover letter that's a great opportunity to show that you are interested in consulting even if it isn't tangibly like through an internship that you've done in the past um, I would say that anything entrepreneurial um, or like that you've explored or anything that you um, like an initiative that you've started or like a startup or just like any program on campus where you lead, those are all great opportunities where you can show that entrepreneurial spirit. Got it. Cool. That's definitely really awesome advice to have. Um, and then for you personally, what career paths do you kind of see your role as an associate consultant leading to? Gotcha. So a lot of associate consultants end up pretty much working at like such a variety of different companies. Um, there's typically a feeder into private equity as well, because we do um, work with private equity. But beyond that, there's a lot of people who go into direct consumer goods, um, who go into video gaming, who go into streaming. Um, honestly, the there are a lot of different options coming out of the associate consultant tenure. Got it. That sounds really awesome. And then for you personally, what do you feel like are some core skills that you've learned so far in your role? Um, I would say that one of like, the, while there are very technical skills that I'm have pretty quick, quick to, like picked up pretty quickly, even though I am normally on the near end of like non quantitative, I include obviously Excel and modeling. But I think the most important skill that I've learned is like the confidence that I can execute and do something, even though I obviously have no idea how to do it. So I think coming into my tenure, I was super scared about doing any type of modeling or doing any type of like key takeaway slide because I just didn't know that much. But now um, kind of being in this environment has given me faith that like with enough time and with asking for help, like I will be able to do something even if I had no idea prior how to do it because I didn't study it in school. And I think that's a really underrated characteristic where you will have the confidence to go into any type of industry and just have faith that you will be able to figure it out yourself. Got it. That, that sounds really awesome. And then for you personally, how do you manage the work-life balance being consulted, but still making time for other things in life? Yeah. So the case that I'm currently on is super sustainable, which I've really enjoyed. But beyond that, Bain does a really good job into trying to make sure that everything that you are is sustainable, even if it's traditionally um, super high churns like private equity work. They have this thing called GAL, which is called Get a Life, where every week you decide on your GAL day with the team and figure out what day of that week you're going to try to get out early. So early for some teams is like 7 p.m. Early for other teams is like 5 p.m., which is great, where you can like make plans that day, plan for like reservations or just hang out with friends. Um, and you have that day, Monday to Thursday, that you could just like chill and have your own time. And then beyond that, Fridays are also a fun day to just get out early if you would want to. Um, and they typically recommend doing that. So I think having that gal day and also um, doing like having nice Fridays, as well as like trying to figure out what really matters to you in terms of that work-life balance. And I think for some people, it's like getting off at six and then coming back to work. Some people, it's like working out. Others, it's like they want to just like play games, like game at night. Um, so figuring out what you need to like be a functional um, like human being and also like how to maintain your current lifestyle and communicating that early on because they do give you space and they do want to know what type of working style you have and what really matters to you um, is kind of a way to maintain that work-life balance. Got it. That sounds really awesome. And then at Bain specifically, uh, what is kind of like traveling and, you know, uh, like going to client site kind of look like for you guys going forward? Yeah. So right now it's super contingent on the office location. So obviously the COVID situation is really different across different offices. So specifically in LA, um, right now in September, we're expected to be in commutable distance but there's really no expectation to go to the office if you don't feel comfortable to, or there hasn't been any discussion in terms of traveling um, from an office-wide perspective. There are some cases that have been traveling for one-off meetings or really important meetings where they need to all meet. Um, but 
I think generally the transition to traveling has been pretty slow and there hasn't been much conversation, if at all, about returning to the Monday to Thursday traditional consulting model. If anything, I'll probably go into the more um, occasional, um, like traveling for specific projects or specific meetings, as opposed to the expectation that you should always be on client site. Got it. Cool. Awesome. And then just one last question, and then uh, we'll dive into audience questions is what does career progression look like in a company or, you know, what is the model for that, the structure for that? Gotcha. Yeah. So typically you, um, after two years of being an associate consultant, you move on to your senior associate consultant role where you're doing more leadership, where you're leading other ACs and ACIs. And then from there, you can move on to a consultant level. So this is where you can be like a direct transfer. You don't go to business school and you just move up to consultant level or people to go to do choose to go to business school where they just spend two years like having fun, learning a lot, meeting a bunch of new people. And then beyond that, um, after two years of consultant role, you can have the option to like become a manager. And then from there, the progression is to senior manager to partner. That was a very short description, but um, from my experience, like I've been kind of surprised at how quickly people are able to become the senior manager level. Um, like I think people can do so in like six to seven years, although take that with a grain of salt because I'm not 100% sure, but um, that's kind of how the opportunity goes where you have more and more managerial responsibility um, every, every year you progress. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for all that information just on your role and the company as as a whole. Um, so now, yeah, we'll open up the floor for any audience questions. So if anyone like has a question specific um, for Vanessa or just the company or to consulting, um, feel free to ask. Um, oh, oh, cool. So we have one question from Aaron. Um, Aaron, would you like to just unmute and go ahead and answer your question? Um, you're welcome to if you want. Yeah, for sure. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you for um, thank you for the great insights so far. So my question, and I'm quite new to uh, the entire industry, is I just want to learn about your application process. Um, was there any way that you personalize your resume to the firm other than, you know, making sure that you're uh, showing results, making sure that it's concise, making sure there are action words, but more specifically, were there was there anything specific to consulting that you'd recommend to people who've never touched that world before? And I was also wondering if you applied to other consulting firms other than Bain, and if so, uh, did you change your application in any way? Gotcha, yeah. So in terms of the, um, I think there were like three questions. I might've missed the third one, but I'll address the first two. Um, so in terms of the first question about like whether I personalized my resume, I did not personalize my resume. The only thing that I did change was the name of the PDF. So I would do like first name, last name, parentheses, Bain. And like first name, last name, parentheses, like Bain 2020 to remember if I was like applying for specific years. Um, that's like the only modification that I made with my resume, just because I think in consulting, they're generally looking for among the same things. Although I would personalize it if I was applying for different industries, like for banking, for consulting, for tech, I would probably use different resumes there. Um, I did apply to other consulting firms um, and I also interned at a different consulting firm, but I would generally use the same resume throughout. And then the only kind of change throughout the application process is definitely the cover letter. Um, obviously people like change the words, they like have different blanks or, or like red bolded where they can change the company name, um, change specific like characteristics of the company. But I always left a complete paragraph that I would just scrap and rewrite for each uh, company that like talked a lot about their values, talked a lot about what I've learned through networking and whatnot. Um, Aaron, I'm not sure if I have missed anything. Um, I remember you asking a third question, but let me know. Yeah, thanks for the answers. Um, and yeah, that's super, super appreciate the insights because I think it's often hard to find these kind of almost simple questions online. Um, I think maybe my third question you kind of did answer, but if if I can, I want to ask another question. And I think that's um, if you don't come from a business background, you didn't go to business school, you didn't major in business, and um, you know you have other experiences, you have some club experience, you have some research experience. What do you think uh, if you were in that person's shoes, you would choose to emphasize? Is there anything that um, 
could, would kind of speak to you more in your conversations uh, with recruiters or people at Bain that you think, ah, that's what you should emphasize and maybe not this kind of stuff? Um, anything about that? Gotcha. Yeah, I honestly um, wouldn't worry at all if you don't have a traditionally business background because so many of my coworkers here are engineers or studied philosophy or studied history. One of them like even had like a music background. Um, oh. So emphasizing, um, go on. No, no, sorry. That's, that's super cool. Yeah. So um, emphasizing kind of the fact that your background makes you a stronger candidate because you have done so many different diverse industry, different industries, and also have met different people, I think is one kind of avenue that you can approach your application and that Yes, like you have a really great understanding of what consulting is because you've done your research, but also you are able to apply your skills in engineering because of X, Y, Z, or able to apply your skills in philosophy because you can think differently and think creatively. So that um, aspect of kind of having a different concentration, you can 100% emphasize throughout your conversations and throughout your application because it honestly just makes you more interesting than um, maybe the traditional candidate who is a business school student. Awesome, that's super helpful. And yeah, gives me a bit more confidence. Thank you so much. Cool, awesome. Thanks so much for those awesome questions, Aaron. Um, do anyone else in the audience have any questions? Um, I see a couple of hands raised. Why don't we go to Sandy first? Um, Sandy, feel free to unmute and just go ahead and ask any questions you have. Sure, um, hi, Vanessa. Thanks for taking the time to speak with all of us. Um, I just wanted to know, so you mentioned you were working on like a sustainable project. I was kind of curious what that was about and if you could go into more detail about any pro bono or social impact cases at Bain and what those are like. Oh, gotcha. Um, I just wanted to clarify that my case is work-life balance sustainable, not necessarily right. oh, okay. sustainability focused. So that was okay. my bad for misrepresenting my case. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the pro bono work, there is generally like a lot of pro bono cases that come that you can just get staffed on, mm -hmm. um, and especially if you express your interest in the very beginning, like I want to do nonprofit work, maybe I want to work in education. That is something that they'll always have on your little profile for as an associate consultant, where in the future there is sustainability cases, they will loop you in if you are like on staff, for example. Um, and then beyond that, there's also a lot of affinity groups, one of them being a pro bono consulting work where you actually get the experience. Um, it's not like a typical, it's kind of like an extracurricular that you might do in college where you have a case and often the associate consultants become consultants, the consultants become managers where you're just doing a case with people pretty close to you in tenure and actually helping drive actionable change for any type of pro bono. Um, so that's uh, an opportunity that you can do as well. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds really great. Thank you so much. Perfect, awesome. Thanks for the awesome question, Sandy. Um, the next person is Samil. Samil, like, feel free to stay on mute and ask any questions you have. That sounds good. Yeah, thank you, Vanessa, for talking to us today. Um, you mentioned a little bit about like talking about like networking. So I saw um, my main question is like, is what tips do you have for like networking with individuals? And then um, like how important do you think it is in like consulting versus like other fields? Gotcha. So I would say that um, in terms of uh, like the best way to approach networking, um, generally the Bain email is very, very standard. First name dot last name at Bain.com. And the other email, the other consulting emails are also very guessable. So I would recommend just emailing people instead of LinkedIn messaging people that you are interested in chatting with, having a super short blurb of maybe like who you are, like why you think that they could be super helpful, whether it's because you guys both go to the same school or you really, you are the same major as they are. Um, and then also asking for maybe 15 minutes of their time in the next couple of weeks. So that's kind of a standard way to effectively network. Um, and then beyond that, I think the one of the reasons or in terms of the emphasis of networking in consulting compared to other industries is I would say consulting tends to be very focused on like target, potentially non-target schools, where if you do go to a target school for specific consulting firms, it is generally less important for you to network because there's already a very set pipeline for you to meet people, to go to information sessions and whatnot. 
Um, but if you do tend to go to a non-target school, which is completely okay, because I also went to a non-target school, um, there potentially may be more of an emphasis on networking, but it doesn't, and compared to other industries, it's not so much as you having to talk to every single analyst who goes to the office. If you talk to just one person that you really, really vibe with, that is really, really great. And honestly, you can kind of carry that relationship further as opposed to trying to network with every single company, with every single person at that company. I'm not sure if I answered your question fully, but um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was, that was good. Perfect, awesome. Thanks so much for the great questions, Samil. And then um, Emily, I know you asked a question in the chat. Um, would you like to just unmute and go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, sure. First, I wanted to say um, thank you so much for doing this and taking the time out of your day to, to help us out. But I was wondering um, if you could talk about, I guess, one of your most fulfilling experiences that comes to mind um, at the firm, whether it be project you worked on, team experience, or, or like an extra 10 that you're involved in. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, um, since I'm pretty new there and my, my full class hasn't started yet, we haven't really heard much about extra 10 since I think they're going to like open sign ups once everyone in my class does start. But I would say the most fulfilling experience is being able to, um, like the past week, my supervisor was out on vacation and I thought that I would be super flustered and really have not known what I would like any idea of what I'm doing because when he's here, because I'm so new, he, essentially guides me along and make sure that I have runway every day. Um, but instead, last week, it honestly was completely fine. Um, I was able to lead the work stream to my ability as best as I could, obviously with tremendous help, even though I've only been staffed for like a couple months. So that's been really fun, just um, being able to take more like initiative in that I thought that I would never be able to do that. But I think given the opportunity where I had to do that, um, has been fulfilling where I realized that it isn't as horrible or as scary as I thought it would be. Yeah, no, that's super cool to hear about. Thanks for um, for sharing that. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, Emily, for the question. Um, and see you. I know you also asked a question in the chat. Would you like to go ahead and unmute and ask your question? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Vanessa, for the, uh, for the sharing. Uh, you kind of talked about how uh, students from non target schools can go about with networking. Um, and I also want to know the importance of like applying to a master's program in target school um, and to what extent do you think that would help um, a student who wants to go to consulting like successfully getting an offer. Thank you. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so I think from being going from a non-target school is not like impossible by any means. I just think that you can have a greater emphasis throughout your application process on networking, on um, potentially getting a referral from people and just building genuine connections like from any from any tenure, from the associate consultant tenure to the partner tenure. And I do think that applying to a master's program in a target school could help. But um, I also wanna caveat that typically um, only MBAs will start at the consultant level, where if you go to a master's program that is not in a business school master's program, you would start at the associate consultant level along with other recent graduates. Um, so that's kind of the only caveat to know if you care a lot about like what tenure you would be starting at with a master's degree. But beyond like importance of getting a master's program to um, become a target school, I don't think it's necessary by any means. It's just a different opportunity or option that you could take. Got it, thanks so much. Perfect, awesome. And then next question from Shailesh. Uh, Shailesh, go ahead and just unmute and ask whatever questions you have. Um, I just had a follow-up question about, um, you know, the, the networking um, advice you gave us. I was wondering, would you recommend speaking to people from multiple offices or would it be kind of better to talk to, you know, people from, you know, your specific target office? Obviously, you're looking for common ground. You're looking for people with the same school, maybe the same major. But beyond that, I was wondering if, um, you know, one or the other, um, you would recommend doing one or the other. Yeah, 
yeah, I'd probably recommend applying, um, just talking to people from one specific office just because you do get to preference multiple offices, but your application will directly be sent to just the one that you prioritize the most, the one that you preference the most. Um, so if you are able, um, if you are able to like kind of focus your efforts on that one office where maybe you talk to like a couple of ACs who can all vouch for you, um, I think that might be a better alternative than talking to multiple ACs from different offices where they might not be as in touch with your application or recruiting process because they're not reviewing your resume. That makes sense. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much also for that question. Emily, see your hand raised. Um, yeah, feel free to go ahead and mute if you have another question. Yeah, I had another question that is also related to networking because um, obviously um, consultants, ACs are really busy all the time. And so do you have any tips on how to... Um, just continue the relationship while, you know, being mindful of people's schedules. Oh, gotcha. In terms of um, like networking with the like associate consultant or the consultants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I think I always just kind of gauge their time, like, or their willingness to help or um, their availability. I always like bring up the fact like, oh, um, I'm, like I really need to sharpen my casing skills or, oh, like, I, like I'm looking for some advice on like, I'm like about to draft my cover letter, my resume and whatnot. And then usually their response is pretty indicative as to like how, like not necessarily good, but how much bandwidth they do have. So I brought up the fact that I needed a case like to a couple people from the partner level to the consultant level. And some of them have said like, oh, I can definitely case you. Like, I'll just do it on a weekend. Like, let me know when you're free. While other people will say like, oh, um, I will have to like check my schedule to see if like I can do that. So based on that type of response, that's how I can usually gauge like the cadence of the relationship moving forward. And then beyond that, um, I would say that there are generally like when I was going through e writing emails and networking, people would always say like, oh yeah, like do not respond. Like you should only send during business hours. Um, it's like really impolite if you email them after 5 p.m. But honestly, like working now, I feel like time, like I do not necessarily have a preference for like 9 to 5 p.m. emails. So honestly, like if you could send them early morning or around like 6 p.m., that's usually when people like are wrapping up their days and like are responding to emails. So feel free to like send emails then as to like the best hack to like hack their schedule. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for all the amazing questions here. Um, any other questions from anyone else in the audience? I'll give it a second. All right, cool. Well, there's no other questions. Um, just to wrap things up, Vanessa, what's kind of the best piece of advice you want to leave us with um, as we kind of head into the recruiting interviewing season for consulting? Gotcha. So I would say like the best piece of advice is to know that you already belong there. So during an interview, I think nerves can get the best of all of us. I think so much of what comes down to performance is like, do you feel like, are you stressed? Like, are you stumbling over words or are you like communicating yourself like the best you can communicate, which is like you all are super capable of, um, of doing really well in these interviews. So something someone told me is that like when you are interviewing, they already have a spot for you. Like they already know that you're super qualified, have a lot of credentials, have worked really hard to get here. Um, so just think of you as like trying to show that you deserve the spot that they've already left open for you. And they're not trying to trip you at all. Like they're not trying to see, like test you to see like how good you are. Um, they, the interviewer is there to support you as well. Um, so making it as conversational as possible with them and also like maybe doing power poses and getting confident beforehand and thinking to yourself that you are um, as good as every single other candidate there is, um, is like one thing that I did to make sure that I wasn't super stressed, even though like I inevitably was. Cool, awesome. Thank you so much, Vanessa, again, for taking time to share your advice with us, um, telling us a bit more about the role and answering all our questions we have here about applications and the recruiting process. Um, if we have any follow-up questions, um, is there any way we can like reach you? You know, like what's the best way to follow up with that? Yeah, um, I'll send my email through the chat. So feel free to just email me anytime. 
Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much again for everyone who joined and asked really awesome questions here. Hope you all learned a lot and hope this is all helpful. And thank you again, Vanessa, for all your time. Um, this is really helpful. This will be posted on YouTube. So if you want to like review this and, you know, like review any questions that were answered, you can feel free to check out the ladder YouTube there and feel free to share something that you learned um, on our platform as well too and share with everyone else. Um, otherwise, hope everyone has a good rest of the day and good luck applying for consulting jobs in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, good luck, everyone. Cool. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys.